when uh, Elvis, we were sort of Elvis clones musically. <laughs> and uh, when Elvis got a drummer, Buddy said to me, uh, we need a drummer. So uh, he said, I know this kid that uh, plays real well in, uh, for the level high school band. And we, uh, <clears throat> he, he said, we gotta go down, I want you to meet him. So, we went down there in the street marching, practicing for a football game on Friday night. And after the practice, Jack came running up to the car and he hadn't had his growth spurt yet. And he was a little bitty kid. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a big joke man. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong, man. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, <clears throat> friendly and played well and fun to hang out with. Anyway, we, uh, we traveled a jillion miles together and picked a jillion gigs and uh, had probably uh, twice that much beer uh, <laughs> and gallons I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, uh, and Joni said, uh, try to remember a story, so I'll try not to keep you all day. Uh, <clears throat> but I've come up with one, because J.I. was a warner, and he was a leader, I mean, from the word go. He, if, if we had a problem, he could fix it. Anyway, this involved Paul McCartney, and uh, in 1979, Paul used to do uh, every year, uh, he'd have a celebration uh, celebrating Buddy Holly's birthday, he called them Holly Days, and he called J.I. with a list of people he wanted on the show. He said, I'd like to have Don Everly and Albert Lee and uh, uh, Rick Gretsch, who was with Blind Faith. Uh, and uh, anyway, and of course you guys. And J.I. got on the phone and called everybody and he took the trouble to uh, ask everybody and said, hey, no money in it, but it uh, falls paying, paying, play, uh, picking up our expenses. So we, Got her wives and flew to England, and uh, my wife Louise read, and the magazine said, when in London, go, be sure to go to the Caviar Bar. So one night over there, we had the night off, and uh, we rounded up the whole bunch, Don and Karen, Joby and Jane, Louise and me, Jan and Joni, and uh, Albert and Karen, and we all went to the Caviar Bar, and man, that magazine was right. When in London, you should go to the Caviar Bar. That, uh, it was quite expensive. They brought us a bottle of Stolich Naya and a block of ice. Anyway, the bill came to $1,000. Oh and in 1979, uh, $1,000 was thousand dollars. <laughs> anyway, when the tour was over, I mean, when the show was all done in there, Jay, I went to Alan Crowder, who was Paul McCartney's main man, and he, uh, <clears throat> he gave Alan Crowder a few little bills, and he presented him with that thousand dollar bill from the caviar bar. And Alan Crowder said, we can't pay that. And man, I mean, we're talking about a show with Don Everly, Albert Lee, everybody played for free that J.I. got together. And, and if they'd have had to pay for that, everybody did it free. If they'd had to pay for that, it cost them a bleeding fortune. Notice I said bleeding, I'm telling a story about England. <laughs> anyway, so J.I. had to eat it. And so we got back home. Six years later, uh, Paul McCartney and the BBC were doing uh, a documentary about Buddy Holly. You can't do a documentary about Buddy Holly and not have J.I. in it. Anyway, they came out to my house, rewired everything. I set out on my deck and they recorded my portion of the show. Went over to Joe B's house they uh, recorded his portion of the show. Then they went out to J.I.'s house. And I remember I was out there on the front porch picking a guitar and they uh, were monkeying around the sound people and the camera people and they all afternoon monkeying around getting everything set up, man. And they said, it was getting about 
dusk dark. And anyway, they said, okay, we're ready to go. And J.I. said, uh, just a minute. He said, uh, I've talked about Buddy Holly all of my life, and I don't really care if I ever say another word about him. <laughs> he said, there's a, an issue about a thousand dollar bill <laughs> from uh, the caviar bar. <laughs> he said, I've got a refrigerator full of beer and uh, we can gather around and have that beer. And he said, when you're, uh, when my bank manager calls me in the morning, they call it bank manager in England. He said, when my bank manager calls me in the morning and tells me that a thousand dollars has been in my account, he said, then we can roll on it. <laughs> well, I needless to say that little English director was really turned off. <laughs> he got on the phone to Alan Crowder and uh, next morning, man, J.I.'s bank called and said, they've just uh, said, I've been instructed to tell you that they're just put a thousand dollars in your bank account. And J.I. said, and I said, well, okay, let's roll them, guys. <laughs> anyway, sure, Miss Old Buddy. Yeah. <laughs>